my name is Taylor. Welcome back to my channel or welcome if you are new. So today I am doing two book tags. Uh, I was tagged by Lindsay from BFCG to do the fairy tale retellings tag and I did not write down the creator because I think Lindsay said that it was created a long time ago and she just had it in her back pocket, back pocket to do it on a rainy day. So I didn't write down that person's name or their channel name rather. So I'll put it in the description box if you want to go check out the original. I was also tagged by Celestia to do that uh, same tag, but also the fairy tale book tag, which was created by Rachel Reads. So I will have all those creators and taggers <laughs> in the description box. Please go check them out. They have excellent content. And thank you to all of them for creating it and for tagging me. So I'm so excited because you'll know uh, fairy tales are maybe my thing. It just, you know, I, I create a whole readathon around them. So obviously I like them. Um, so I was super excited to, to get tagged. So I will start off with the fairy tale book tag. So the first prompt is Rapunzel, a long book you gave five stars or a long book, meaning over 450 pages. So I'm not the hugest big book reader. Um, so I had a limited number of books to pull from. Maybe one day that will change, but, um, I'm going to say... North and South by Elizabeth Gaskell and this is a classic and it is a romance it's kind of uh think of it as kind of similar to Pride and Prejudice but set in Victorian England and during the Industrial Revolution and you know kind of the enemies to lovers type romance um the BBC uh miniseries production is perfection but this is the book version obviously so Check it out if you haven't read it yet. Um, the second prompt is The Little Mermaid, a book that took your breath away. So I had to think about this for a second, but I was like, what does that mean? Um, but my answer that I'm going to go with is When the Day Comes by Gabriel, My Gabriel Meyer. That's how she says her name. Um, this Y'all have heard me talk about it. It has taken booktube by storm for good reason. It is worth the hype. It's so, so good. Um, but I will have all of the books linked in the description box if you're curious about hearing further thoughts, um, descriptions about them. But what I'll say about why this took my breath away. So one, it is extremely unique. No other book, book series is like it on the market. It's Christian. Um, and two... Um, I read it at a uh, difficult time in my life, and I will say the part that especially took my breath away is um, the reminder of who God is, and why he does things, you know, why he is there for us, how he's there for us. Um, so just the reminder of, of that message and that truth um, really took my breath away, and it was, um, it was a very riveting read. So I love that book. Number three, Swan Lake, a book with the with a theme of sacrifice. And this one I'm going to say, Hope's Highest Mountain by Misty and Beller. And this is a historical romance. It's Christian fiction. Um, and it is about a young woman that is on a journey to deliver smallpox vaccines to um, a community of people in a very remote part of the wilderness. <laughs> um, so... At the very beginning of the book, there is an accident um, uh, for the people that are trying to deliver these vaccines, and she is the only survivor. So, in that in and of it, in and of itself, that is a sacrifice of life to try and get these vaccines. And then um, it's a story of survival um, to to get to this this community of people to save these people from from dying from that illness. So, that is what I'll say for that one. Rumpelstiltskin, a book that changed you. And I've, I've seen a few other people do this tag and their answer is the same as mine, or my answer is the same as theirs. Um, and the only book that has truly changed me is the Bible. And um, yeah, I can't really, there's nothing else to really compare uh, to that. <laughs> so that's my answer. Um, yeah, so... If you're a Christian, you already know that, um, you know, we read the Bible to learn more about 
God and how to live a more Christ-like life. And I definitely have become a new creature since um, since becoming a Christian. And um, if you haven't seen my salvation story, I'll have it linked in case you're curious. But um, so yeah, I'm a very, very different person. And part of that, or a big part of it, is because of my um, reading the Bible, what I've learned from it. So that is my answer for that. Uh, the 12 Dancing Princesses, a book with a lot of characters. So I feel like I'm cheating a little bit with this one because it is a 12 Dancing Princesses retelling, but I really couldn't think of, of any other book where I was like, wow, this is a lot of characters and I'm having a really hard time keeping up with who's who because I was listening through it to it to, through audiobook. And when you have that many cast of characters and it's just purely audio, it is pretty hard. So, but I still really enjoyed the, the story. So it is um, A Dance of Silver and Shadow by Melanie Sellier. Um, this is uh, the second part of, well, second, the start of a second series. Um, there's the Four Kingdoms series and then this one, um, this book starts the Beyond the Four Kingdoms series. So it's, it's smack in the middle of, of a long-standing uh, series, but it's very, very good, and I really enjoyed it. Uh, Sleeping Beauty, a book with a slow plot, and I'm going to have to say Laura France books. Um, yeah, I've read a couple by her, and they're all pretty slow. Like, I've noticed with her books that the synopsis on the back um, doesn't even occur until, like, a third of the way into the book like I've heard some other people talk about this I've noticed it so I'm just like when are we gonna get to this part of the book but um, yeah I uh, the book I'll mention specifically is um, the rose and the thistle that's the last book I read by her and um, yeah I've heard some people DNF this book because it was so slow um, I found it slow too, but I persevered because I really enjoy um, historical romance. I would say, unless you are hardcore into historical or historical romance even, I would suggest maybe skipping this book. Um, but yeah, so <laughs> uh, I, I like, you know, I liked it, but it was like, I don't know if Laura France is for me. Um, and she's just a she just has a little bit of a slow plot to her books. So, um, Mulan, book with lots of action. So I'm going to say Cry of the Raven by Morgan L. Bussey. And this is the third book, third and final book, um, to the Ravenwood saga. And things are going down in this book. There are lots of fights. Um, things happen. Um, lots of moving parts. So good. You should read it. <laughs> Aladdin, a book that transported you to a whole new world. And that one would definitely have to go to Sky of Seven Colors by Rachel Nelson. This book is a portal world book. Um, the main character slips into an alternate version of Earth. Um, it is an Earth without color. Uh, it's all blacks, grays, and whites. And the way that Rachel describes this world is very immersive and very imaginative, very creative, and just makes you think about how our world would be so different without color. And um, she creates these whole new species that are just so unique. And I don't know, it's just like my imagination was on fire with this book. And I, I really enjoyed my my experience of, of imagining this world so that one that one is actually a debut no, debut novel and that was very impressive um cinderella a book with a self-sufficient character and i read this book recently so the horse and his boy by c.s lewis um there's a little boy in this uh named shasta and he uh was taken taken in um, by this man that is uh, basically using him. He, he uh, has him like do uh, domestic labor, um, cooks and cleans for him, that type of thing. 
And so he he's a little he's a little boy, but he basically runs this house for for this man, and you know goes to the market, and he's he eventually leaves. He decides to escape this man and takes off um, to go hopefully towards to, towards Narnia. But that whole uh, first little part of the book where it's describing how his life was um, with this man, um, yeah, it's it's he's very self sufficient. Alice in Wonderland, a fabulous book with a great cast of side characters. And I had to look what, look up what fabulous meant because I had no idea. I'd never heard of this word before, but it means delightful or joyful, joyous. And um, as apparently the term was created by um, Lewis Carroll, who, who wrote Alice in Wonderland. Um, I had a little hard time with this because I tend to read more serious books, I guess. But I did find a funny book on my shelf. So, Imagine the Making by Jen Toronto. This was very funny. Um, and there were two little, little children in this book. They're siblings and they're causing havoc and having some interesting comments to people. And a lot of shenanigans go down. And yeah, I would definitely say that one. Last question for the fairy tale book tag, wild card, Fa your favorite fairy tale retelling couple. So I'm going to say To Break a Silence, that's the book, um, by Lydia May, and Stella and her uh, romantic interest are just the sweetest couple. Um, love them. So yeah, that's all I'll say for them, for that question. All right, the fairy tale retelling tag. So the first question, what is your favorite fairy tale? So uh, mine would have to be Beauty and the Beast. I don't know, there's just something in me that loves like the misunderstood guy and you learn more about him, like hearts start to thaw towards each other, especially when the one character is, is really nice to them and like, kills them with kindness type of thing. Um, I don't know. It may, it's, it may not be, you know, the best relationship in real life, but it makes up for a pretty good fairy tale retelling story. <laughs> Number two, what is your favorite retelling of your favorite fairy tale, which is Beauty and the Beast? So mine, I would have to say Before Beauty by Brittany Fisher. And um, I really enjoy that one because Brittany Fisher is a Christian. She did not mark her, her books as Christian, um, but there is an underlying theme, um, allegorical elements to it, um, and it especially comes out at the very, very end of that book, and I was like, oh my goodness, this is so good that she tied up the story this way, and yeah, it, I enjoyed that one. And I really want to continue the series. I'm going to reread that one uh, to refresh my memory because it's been a little while since I've read it. And um, I want to continue on in that series soon. Um, number three, what is your favorite retelling of a different fairy tale? Um, so I would have to say um, my favorite fairy tale retelling of last year, as I've said multiple times, that's not like a broke record, sorry y'all, um, but that would be The Coming Hook by Mary Meckham, obviously a Peter Pan retelling, so unique, love it. Um, and then I also really enjoyed To Break a Silence, which would be um, The Little Mermaid, that one as well. Uh, what is your fav favorite style of retelling? So would it be steampunk, futuristic, etc.? And I think I've read the majority like fantastical or um, historical. I haven't read futuristic or steampunk yet, so I don't know. I'm going to say everything because I'm open to anything. Um, I don't have, I don't, I don't think I have a favorite. I like all of them. <laughs> Uh, so number five, what two fairy tales would you combine for an amazing retelling? <sighs> Y'all, I'm not creative. I don't know. I struggle with this question. Like I am, I, yeah, I struggled, but what I came up with, I was like, well, what is my favorite fairy tales out of all of them? So 
Beauty and the Beast. And then my second favorite would probably be The Little Mermaid. Not the original. The nice version. The happy version. But, um, so I was thinking, well, maybe it could be like, uh, kind of like a gender flipped maybe where, uh, the Ariel girl is the sea witch takes away her voice and she's, you know, in a undersea castle and the guy finds her and I don't know. <laughs> uh, yeah, just Beauty and the Beast, but set underwater, but gender flipped. I don't know. That's the best I got. Uh, number six, what retelling book is on your TBR that you would like to read soon? Um, well, I don't really have, I just, I like to mood, mood read the, those more because they don't, they all kind of give you the, the cozy vibes, or at least they give me the co cozy vibes and just all around just happy. So um, as I come across uh, them, I just kind of just read them. So I don't really have any particular plans. I have several on my Goodreads TBR list, several. Um, also like ones that come available on Libby or Hoopla is, is also another factor in my decision on which ones I'm going to pick up next. But like I said, I do want to finish the Before Beauty series. Um, so I'm just going to say that one for that answer. Uh, number seven, what was the last retelling you finished? So that would be Married at Sunrise by Leiloha Humphreys. This is a King Thrushbeard retelling. Um, this has excellent world building. It feels like you're on a, a tropical island paradise, like Hawaii-esque. Um, the main character loves to look at sharks. The sharks are in this book. So if you like sharks, definitely recommend for that. I wasn't as much of a fan of the romance, but definitely the, the world building is, is very good. Uh, what fairy tale have you not read a retelling of, but would like to? Aladdin. Uh, yeah, I haven't read an Aladdin one. I don't think I've read Jack and the Beanstalk. Um, those are the two that, that come to mind. Number nine, what is one retelling you are currently anticipating coming out? Well, <laughs> I haven't heard any recently that are fairy tale retellings. Um, other than maybe that if the boot fits by Karen Whitmar, Whitemire. Uh, I don't know if that one is out yet, but I think it, is it coming out this month? I, I don't know. It's a recent release if it is already out, but I haven't even read the first book. <laughs> so, um, I'll just say that one. And then the last question. So, so tag some other people. Um, yeah, I don't think I'm going to tag anybody. However, if you want to do this tag, consider yourself tagged by me and tag me in your video so I know you did it. So, um, yeah, that's, that's how I'm going to answer that. Cause I'm not sure. I'm not sure who really loves fairy tales enough to do a full t two tags on it. <laughs> so if you feel so inclined, please do it. Tag me in it so I can see it. If you don't have a channel, but you want answers on these questions, let me know. I would love to know some of your answers for these, uh, particularly uh, what is your favorite fairy tale? I'm always curious about that. I can tell a lot about a person by their, t their favorite fairy tale, you know, but yeah. So thank you all so much for watching this video and I will see you in the next one. Bye y'all.